All right, so two years ago, I made a video talking about my experience, like going into medical school and how I was. Generally, I was pretty anxious about moving to Brisbane, Australia for two years. For those of you who may not know, my medical school is unique in that the first two years take place in Brisbane, Australia, and then years three and four take place here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And a few things have changed since then. First of all, I no longer live in Australia. I have checked off living abroad in some other country from my bucket list. And that was a really good experience, but now I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, where I've been doing my OBGYN rotation for the last five weeks in my first semester of year three. I've also not actually set up my apartment yet just because I had to go straight into rotations when I moved here. So I don't know if y'all can see in the background, but that's my computer on the ground, still not set up. That couch isn't supposed to be there. There's a bunch of stuff on the couch that hopefully you can't see too well. And then this like, fake tree that I bought is hiding most of the stuff on my desk. That is very messy for now. The other big thing that's changed is that I've passed step one, which is like this huge obstacle that you have to, at least we have to get through at the end of our second year. And I can't express how much of a massive load off your shoulders it is. Once you see that passing score in your inbox, it's like a Christmas present and a birthday present all at once. And you never have to worry about step one ever again. I do have to worry about step two, but more on that later. So I wanted to make this video for anyone about to start medical school or who is currently in medical school. And is just curious about what the experience is like for both year one and two. Um, so I'll let you know how I think of year one and two, and then give you a little bit of insight about how I felt about year three so far, considering I've only done five weeks and have yet to even take any exams. So let's get started. Year one, in my opinion, is like taking a cold plunge in a pool because it's very exciting. Uh, you're really not sure like what's going on, but you know that you finally got in and you're ready to celebrate with all of your new peers. So you're meeting new people you're probably in a new city. Maybe you're moved into a new place. In my case, uh, a new country. So it can be very easy to become overwhelmed just because of all of that lifestyle stuff going on. But also, since you're starting school, now you have to learn how to study and approach different classes in a completely different way, in my opinion, than undergrad. For me personally, it was my, my first time living alone. Um, my first time living away from family, like 25 hours away by plane, which is crazy. Uh, and then any good Cuban son out there will understand Cuban families are like this and so I didn't expect it to affect me as much as it did uh, Being away from family, but it definitely did it had a huge factor You kind of lose that social support, which is, I think it's something that's not really talked about too much um, But it's a huge factor an unexpected benefit that I do want to mention about living somewhere else or living abroad for a little while is that you become a lot more comfortable with the idea of living somewhere else temporarily. Um, in my case, Australia never really felt like my home, but that's fine. I did enjoy it quite a bit. I traveled a bunch and met a bunch of nice, very interesting people. And now if I had to do it over again, or if I, for whatever reason, wanted to move elsewhere to maybe study or experience something new, I'm a lot more comfortable with the idea of that because I know at the end of the day, I'm always gonna return back home to be with wherever my family is. And since I've already been through it once, uh, it's not as like stressful or anxiety inducing to do it all over again. But back to like the medical school stuff, uh, I think in my opinion, might be a bit controversial, but year one is by far the most stressful year of med school. I can't emphasize enough how the study load in medical school is a lot more intense than an undergrad like any, at least my undergrad, it's a lot more intense than my undergrad. And it's because of sheer volume. Like it's not because of anything else. It's just the sheer volume of information that you have to kind of contend with and compartmentalize uh, while also trying to keep a steady pace on what the school demands of you. And because of this, I really looked into a bunch of different study strategies and I experimented quite a bit in my first year as I was going through in hindsight. I think that I would do two main things differently. Number one, I would probably stick to using maximum of like three different resources for my study habits. There's some people out there, they exist, that use like five different sources of information, like five plus. Um, and to me, <laughs> that really stresses me out because it's like trying to think in five different ways all at once. I'm not Tony Stark. <laughs> I, I'm not capable of doing that and so, for myself, that's just not optimal. And I think other people might share a similar experience. So I'm just letting y'all know, try to stick to at least maximum three. Don't really go overboard with a bunch of different sources all at once. Okay, the other thing, and I'm gonna say something kind of controversial, something that if 
like looking back, me being in year one, semester one, I probably would not take this advice. I went into year one, semester one thinking, okay, step one is in like after year two. That means that to get through like the 40,000 cards in the Onking step one deck, I'm gonna have to start studying for step one from day one. And so theoretically, if I start studying for, for step one on day one, then I'm gonna crush step one, I'm not gonna have to worry about it, and my life is gonna be eternally easy, et cetera, et cetera. My controversial advice uh, in my like second point is to not worry about studying for step one like at all in year one, semester one. And I'm saying this because, I'm saying this acknowledging that I probably wouldn't take this advice myself, but looking back now, you know, hindsight is 2020. I think this is the optimal way to go. Whether you take the advice or not, up to you. But the reason I say this is because in year one, semester one, you're still trying to figure out what exactly the school wants. And so it can be very easy to get caught up in like an unnecessary amount of stress speaking about myself, where you're trying to figure out how much to actually, how much time to actually dedicate to the school. And you have, you're desperately trying to figure out how much time to like dedicate to step stuff. Even though again, step is like two years away. You have plenty of time. But regardless, my suggestion is year one, semester one, focus on acing exams, focus on figuring out what resources work best for your school. Because after all, like all schools are different, all curriculums are different, etc. And after you're done year one, semester one, then you can be gung ho about step one. And by that, I mean potentially getting like an easier question bank, something like USMLERX like specifically, uh, where it's like a very lean question bank. It really kind of focuses on the core subjects and is not as intense as UWorld. UWorld, you can say for year two, easy. USMLERX though, you can definitely do in year one, just <laughs> please wait until semester two. If you don't do it, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just telling you what I think is the better way to go, looking back at least. It would definitely save you a lot of undue stress. It would have saved me a lot of unnecessary stress, but that's, that's me hopping off of my little uh, pedestal. Moving on. Okay, so for year two, I'm gonna say it's the slow burn. And I say this because if you've passed through year one, right, um, you know exactly what the school expects from you. You know exactly what a good daily routine looks like. And so you come into semester one of the second year, very confident in knowing what you have to do. And because of this, in the first few weeks, easy mode, you're coasting, you know what everything's about until like rotation start. If you're like me, you're a bit introverted, you're a bit hesitant about uh, talking to people in the hospital and just being part of their management team. Just know that confidence comes with hospital experience. For the five past weeks, I've been on OBGYN and those conversations can be very involved, as you can imagine, and I'm completely comfortable with it because of that built up hospital experience. But like I said, year two is a slow burn because after semester one, you start to realize, oh no, I have to take step one at the end of the year. And that's like almost six months away. Like maybe even less than six months away. For us, uh, since our year is kind of different than US years, we start in January, we end in like uh, November or something. And so for us, we usually take step one in November, between November and January. I took it December 23rd. Excellent decision, by the way, to take it right before the holidays, because if you don't, you're pretty much just gonna be studying the entire time and you're not gonna be able to enjoy that super like precious time with your family that you probably don't see that much because you're stuck in medical school most of the year. But yeah, you start year two, confident, and then little by little, maybe you're like four months out from your step one date, then you're freaking out because there's no absolutely possible way that you can finish the 40,000 Anki cards that you have to do before taking the exam. Um, and that's expected. It's gonna be more stressful the closer you get to your date. Even if you're well prepared, it's a very stressful exam. It's like eight hours long and it's really one of the most difficult exams I've ever taken. I was actually going back and forth with my mates about this, uh, whether for us the MCAT or step one was a lot more difficult personally and like in my friend group, I think we unanimously agree that step one is a lot more intense, but I'd be curious to know what y'all think um, if MCAT is harder or step one is harder, just depending on where you're at at that time. Genuinely curious if you wanna leave a comment below. I appreciate it. So that's years one and two. And then after browsing Reddit for an unreasonable amount of time, um, I was looking things up and the general consensus for year three is that it's the most challenging, the most time intensive, and pretty much just like the worst year of medical school, just because of 
the how much time you're spending in the hospital. And I actually disagree with this uh, for 2.5 reasons. Like I said, right now I'm on my OBGYN rotation. And so that's like deliveries, pap smears, post um, pregnancy visits, etc. And that's exactly what I'm studying in my house. I go to the hospital and I see the real thing. It really cements topics and things to memory a lot better. And that by itself, to me at least, makes this year a lot less stressful because there's a massive amount of synergy in that what you see is what you get. No, what you study is what you get. For years two and one, we did have like a lot of early exposure to hospital things, hospital things, but for example, I'd be studying something random in classes like respiratory diseases, and then in the hospital, I'd be seeing hematology stuff, which, you know, early exposure, very good. You get that hospital experience in, you get more comfortable talking to patients, and you kind of get an idea of the workflow of things. But uh, since it doesn't have the synergy, it's just nowhere near as good as your three, where what you study is what you get. Which brings me to the point that even though right now I'm putting in massive amount of hours into the hospital, like I literally leave my house when it's dark outside and I get home when it's dark outside. I don't mind the time sink as much because it's all OBGYN. I know like where I need to focus all of my attention at the moment. And to me that really reduces the stress level. And so I'm not being like pimped on random things that I'm not studying at home. I'm asked questions on things that I'm seeing daily and that I'm studying daily, which again, reduces stress levels. It's great, honestly, it's not that bad. Number two, if you make it to year three, you've most likely covered a significant amount of information. And so even if you don't remember something, it's probably there subconsciously. So you just need a quick refresher, hopefully. Um, and you've already ideally gotten past the biggest obstacle, which is step one. And so by this point in time, you should have a very good idea of how you study best. And these two things work well together because learning is kind of like this logarithmic curve in medical school and in other professions as well, whereby initially learning something for the first time is something that takes a significant amount of effort. But whilst you build up um, all the new material that you've gradually learned, Re recalling it and remembering it takes a significant less amount of effort because you've already seen it once, right? Ideally. And so just refreshing up on it takes a significantly less amount of time than otherwise. So you know how to study. You've seen most stuff. Studying takes less time, makes this like ideal scenario where you can really focus on your shelf exams and Therefore, longitudinally focus on step two because obviously like exams never end. Okay, and the 0 0.5 is literally just managing your expectations. I'm 100% going into this year thinking that this will be one of the worst years in terms of time commitments and in terms of like generally late study hours, but that's totally fine in relative terms, right? A single year of grinding exponentially hard probably won't kill me, <laughs> probably won't kill me and the long-term results of doing very, very well in year three and killing step two, killing shelf scores is having a very good and long career ahead, also being in a very nice position for residency applications. Next year, all seriousness though, I am enjoying year three so far. Um, we'll see how I feel by the end of it. Again, I've only done OBGYN rotation, so I have no idea what the rest of my rotations will be like. And as I've seen online, it really just depends on who you're placed with. So we'll see how that works out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about year three or I guess step one studying, I, I might do a video about um, my experience with step one, but any questions at all, just feel free to put them in the comments below. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.